uh, Matthew's the 11th chapter, verse 28. Uh, yeah, Matthew's 11, verse 28 through 30. Verse 28 through 30. Uh, Matthew's 11, verse 28 through 30. Uh, 28 through 30. We're going to see what God will say to us on this morning. And I'm going to come from the Message Bible. I know sometimes I come from the New Living Translation. Uh, but I really want to take this from the Message Bible because it gives a, a it's going to help me bring out my point on this morning. Um, and so let's go. Matthew's the 11th chapter, verse 28 through 30. And the Message Bible reads as thus, Are you tired, worn out, burnt out on religion? Come to me, get away with me, and you will recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. Lord have mercy. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. Now the, the King James Version of that is come unto me, all ye that are labored and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So this morning I want to talk to you about make sure you're yoked up with Jesus. Make sure you're yoked up with Jesus, because the, the, the challenge now is there's a lot of people loyalty um, that's going on. There's a lot of leader loyalty that's going on. There's a lot of friendship loyalty that's going on. There's a lot of grandmama and granddaddy loyalty that's going on. There's a lot of parent loyalty that's going on. Um, as it relates to how we live for Jesus. And, and I want to, to make sure that you understand something that uh, the loyalty has to be first to the Lord. Uh -huh. um, because Jesus recognized something here. And, and I want to give you the backdrop of what's going on because we got some scribes and Pharisees that's involved with this message on today. And the Bible says, if, we, if you will go with me to Matthew 23, um, the 23rd chapter, verse 1 through 4. Now here I'm going to use the New Living Translation. So hopefully you're using your, um, your electronic device to keep up with me. Okay, Matthew 23, verse 1 through 4. I want to just give you the backdrop. It said this in the New Living Translation. Then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, the teachers of religious law and the Pharisees are the official interpreters of the law of Moses. Now check this out. So practice and obey whatever they tell you. Okay? Practice and obey whatever they tell you, but don't follow their examples. For they don't practice what they teach. Lord have mercy. They crush people with unbearable religious demands and never lift a finger to ease the burden. This is why I'm saying make sure you're yoked up with Jesus because we have a lot of stuff that we will throw on people. And I don't know about you all, well, I believe I know about you all, but... but for me, it's already a challenge to get out of my flesh and to just do what the Lord said. 
versus somebody piling up more and more stuff as requirements and telling me that if I don't do this, I'm not walking with him. Lord have mercy. And Jesus wanted to make sure that this crowd of people um, that was listening to the Pharisees teach the law. He never disputed what they taught. He said that they, they was the keepers of it. They interpreted it, it, the law of Moses. They did it well. But the issue was they didn't live it. Mm, they didn't practice what they taught. And, 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 and Paul said it like this. Just follow me as I follow Christ. You, 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 the, match up Christ in my life. And, and if you can't see me following Christ, don't follow me. And, and, and I want you to understand something. That this yoke is going to require submission. Mm. See, because many of us have submitted to the yoke of man. Oh God, to the yoke of uh, uh, of requirements, even to the yoke of ignorance. Uh, why do you say that, preacher? Because sometimes to walk in ignorance is easier than to do the requirement. Mm -hmm. and, and so sometimes we say stuff like this: that well, if I don't know. Um, then God ain't gonna hold me accountable. Okay, well, I, I wouldn't bank. I wouldn't bank on that because the scripture says I can't recall where it's at right now. But the scripture says that uh, those who know the way and didn't do it, they was beat with many stripes. Uh, God, but those that did not know the way, uh, uh, had not learned the way, that they was dealt with with. Fewer stripes. In other words, because the Bible is saying that I've already written this stuff on your heart. So if you follow what I've already put inside of you, oh God, to tell you that this is right and this is wrong, um, you won't have no excuse. Oh God. So making sure that you're yoked up with Jesus. Jesus said it like this. Oh God. He knew that the scribes and the Pharisees had some issues. But he said, come to me. Come to me. Come. Oh, God. There was a, some, some key wording that he used in this Matthews 11, 28 through 30. Um, he, in, in that message Bible, he said, come. That's number one. Get away with me. Number two. Walk with me. That's number three. Work with me. Number four. Number five say, watch how I do it. Okay. Number six say, learn the unforced rhythms of grace. And then number seven said, keep company with me. In other words, everything the Lord is telling us to do, if we're going to take his yoke upon us, it's going to require our involvement. Oh God. And he assures us that when we do all of these things, none of it is going to be hard and laborious among us. So he said, listen, come to me, my God, today. Come to me. Get away with me. Let's build a relationship. That's what God is said, trying to get us to understand. That, that don't build so strong. If there's nothing wrong with building strong relationship with men, oh God, as long as they are following Christ. The issue is, is that we, we, we got so many men and women of God that has put so much extra on us. And although it, the intent was, although the intent was to really help us, sometimes I didn't need that help. Oh God. Sometimes I didn't I didn't need that particular help. Uh, I used to have one pastor that would say oh, to me, he said, you know, saints don't do this, saints don't go there, saints don't do this. Now it was nowhere in the scriptures. Lord have mercy. 
Uh huh. And, and, and when I adopted some of those things because of my ignorance and because of my lack of study, because my being yoked to Him first and not being yoked to God. See, if I get yoked, if we get yoked up to God, then we can follow because we'll be able to recognize when a man or a woman of God is following the Lord because I'm yoked up with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Because Jesus' yoke is not is easy and his burden is light. Okay, what is a yoke? What, what is a yoke? In the Bible days, a yoke was a, 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 a wooden frame where they, they would put two animals together. Okay, they would put like what they call a seasoned animal as well as a young animal together. And that seasoned animal would be teaching the young animal how to do things. Being yoked up requires, it's going to bring about focus as well as submission. Lord have mercy. Oh God, because now we got to both go in the same direction. If I'm yoked up with the, with the Lord, I got to go in his direction. I have to submit to him. This is why he can tell us over in James, submit, submit yourself therefore unto God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. The issue is, is that many of us are not yoked up with him. We, we, we're yoked up with man. We're loyal to man. We're loyal to the woman of God. And, and, and we don't know really what God is requiring. And so we'll walk this walk, what we call salvation, irritated and frustrated. Uh -huh. Because we're not yoked up with the Lord. And I'm coming, I've seen somebody else just came on. we in um, Matthew's chapter 11, verse 28 through 30. Okay? But the scripture says that, that, that if we, that his, his, his commandments are not grievous. But why are we walking through this thing irritated and frustrated? And Jesus recognized this with the people. That the people, that, that what these Pharisees was putting on these people was a burden. It was heavy. And God never designed us to carry anything heavy. Mm -mm. He told us that take my yoke upon you. Yoke up with me. This is why he used terms in the, in the message Bible about get away with me. Walk with me. See, that, that requires submission. Walk with me. Since we're going to be yoked up together, walk with me. Oh, God. And then he said, work with me. I'm going to show you how to do this. Watch me. This is what the message Bible says, that Jesus is telling these people as he's trying to get warn them of these Pharisees. He said they teach the Bible good, they teach the law good, but they just don't live it. And many of us sometimes are challenged to separate what God is saying when we have really fallen in love with leaders. And this is not a leader's bashing a message at all. But I do want you to understand something that some of the, we should not be going to church or going through life irritated every time we have to deal with um, being saved. <laughs> Why? Because his yoke is easy. His burden is light. So Jesus wanted to let these people know there is an easier way to live for me than what the Pharisees and the scribes are, are putting on you. There's an easier way. You all, and sometimes we have to go back and, and say to ourselves, Lord, take all the junk out of me that I've allowed to come in me. All the bad teachings, all the things that I said, because I found myself repeating some things that leaders said, and, and, and when the Lord was putting things on my heart to preach at times, I would go to research it, and it wasn't there. It just wasn't there in the scripture. And, 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 and so I, I had to learn that, okay, I'm going to have to step back. I, I can't preach this. See, and there are some things I'm, I'm just not going to preach because I can't prove it in the scripture. Uh huh. And, and so even if it's different from what I was raised on, if I can't find it in the scripture, I can't touch it. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I can't touch it. And, 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 I, and I know I'm going to lose a lot of my preacher friends for this because um, the word of God is the final authority. It's not what I made up. It's not my preference that I want you to do. You know, sometimes we, we think that it's better safe than sorry it is the best way. And so we're teaching a lot of things that say it's better safe than sorry to do versus uh, um, what the scriptures say. See, I learned this about the law. The law never, ever took our choice and responsibility away from us. He gave that to us. Me and my wife was talking of, uh, uh, when Texas was going through this, I think it's called pro-life and pro-choice. And, and so her thing was, baby, where, where are you on this? Are you with pro-life or pro-choice? And immediately I was like, I'm pro-life um, because um, that's murder, this, this, and that. And so people ought not to um, have that right. And then so she said to me, she said, you know, I'm a little on the fence with that. And I said, so why are you on the fence? Because they're taking the people's choice. And then I thought about it immediately. The Holy Ghost began to share with me. <clears throat> the scriptures say, I give to you, I place before you this day, life and death. You choose. Oh, and immediately my, my position changed because I realized that Jesus teaches me right from wrong, responsibility, and he gave me the power of choice. So although the governor is saying, okay, our creator gives life, uh, that same creator gives choice. And although I don't agree with the act of abortion, I do agree with choice. Because Jesus gave me that choice. He done told me that it's my choice to go to heaven or hell. And, 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 and let me tell you something. There is no greater choice than that. There's no greater choice than that. And, 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 and so I, I come to let you know that make sure you yoked up with him. See, because there was a crowd around the governor that was rooting him on. Yeah, yeah, our creator, our creator. But that same creator, he said, I give you the power of choice. You choose. I ain't going to make you live old. I ain't going to make you live right. This is your choice. Okay? And everybody else, you can't choose for them. You, you, you're going to have to work out your own soul salvation with fear and trembling. And so this is what was happening with the Pharisees. Jesus was telling the people, he said, they teach the law right. Just like our governor. Oh yeah, he's talking right, but his actions are not what he's talking about. People of God, make sure you're yoked up with Jesus. Because his burden is not heavy. To be yoked up with him means that, come here, big girl. Come here. Come here. Come here. Yeah. yeah. To be yoked up with him means if he go this way, you go this way. If he go this way, you go this way. Why? Because you yoked up you, and you have focus in the same direction. And so he carries the bulk of the load. Ain't nothing in her hand. It's in my hand. And so as I'm walking, all she got to do is follow. All she got to do is stay in step with me. Matter of fact, if she yoked up with me, she's going to be in step with me because, because the yoke is not going to let her get behind me. My God, today, the yoke is going to keep her in step with me. All right, thank you. That's what the yoke is. And so he is saying, yoke up with me. Yoke up with me. Because what they are teaching, I'm going to teach you that, but I'm just not going to give you all this extra. So yoke up with me. Jesus wants us to be 
yoked up with him so we can learn of him because his yoke is easy and his burden is light. Oh God, he wants us to keep company with him. He wants us to develop this relationship with him where that we can see a thing. See, because when the scripture says this, uh, try the spirit, by the spirit, y'all, this ain't no hocus, focus, hocus pocus stuff. <laughs> trying the spirit, by the spirit, is trying it in the word of God. And if I don't know the word of God and have built a relationship with God, there's no way I'm gonna be able to try the spirit to see whether it's of God or not. And this is why so many of us are are, are are messed up because we got so many ties and loyalty to our beliefs, things that people have told us, to leaders, as well as ignorance. Because we just don't, we don't want to know <coughs> certain things because if I know certain things, then I'm going to be required to do it. And that's the indicator right there. That's the indicator right there that you already know. That you all, that we already know. So the Lord wants us to know today. Make sure that we're yoked up with him. Don't get yoked up with the Pharisees. Man, if you read this whole chapter, uh, chapter 11, you will see that Jesus began to tell these people that I didn't heal you. I done done all these miracles. And you won't even respond with repentance. Why? Because this is how the Pharisees did. They was, doing, they was repeating the actions that they saw. And so, and so it, 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 is, it is crucial for us to build a relationship with God. Because let me tell you something. Things should not change from the pulpit to the back office. I'm sorry. Things are, 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 should not be changing where that I can preach fire and brimstone on the camera. But when I get to the back office, the rules change for me. Uh-uh. No. And the sad part about it is the people that's working with me, they turn a blind eye. And then now they get frustrated and now they're calling one another and they're saying this and they're saying that. And all they have to do is yoke up with Jesus. Because yoking up with Jesus is going to cause you not to be yoked up with some other stuff. Or some other people. Because you can't, you can't be yoked up with four or five things. <laughs> if you're yoked up with Jesus, he's going to lead you. He's going to lead me to where we need to go. So I just wanted to encourage you this morning to make sure that you're yoked up with Jesus. And how do you do it? You get in his word. He, took, he gave us the instructions in Matthews 11, 28 and 30. He said, come to me, get away with me, walk with me, work with me, watch how I do it, learn the unforced, unforced rhythm, rhythm of grace. And keep company with me. That's, that's relationship, you all. All of this is saying, let's do this together. Build your relationship with the Lord. Don't, don't let nothing cause you to stop walking with God. There's been some things that happened in my life. And, and, and I told the Lord, Lord, if you don't do this, I ain't doing this. But all along, I kept saying when things was going good, I kept saying, Lord, I love you. I was like Peter. Lord, I love you. Whatever you want from me, God, here I am. Lord, I'm this and Lord, I'm that. But soon as the hurt came, Lord, have mercy. Now I'm putting God in an ultimatum. That God, if you don't do this, then I ain't doing this. And the Lord had to let me know, no, no, do you really love me? Because if you really love me, this ain't about what you lost. Oh, God. This ain't about what you lost, but this is about what you have. Who, who, what are you yoked up with? Are you yoked up with me, or are you yoked up with that? And let me tell you something. We got to get yoked up with him because he's, gonna, he's the one that knows how to plow through 
landfills filled with uh, bombs. Where I don't know where to walk to prevent something from blowing up on me. He know how to navigate it. If I get yoked up with him, the Bible says this, that his word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my pathway. He, his word can see it before I step on it and blow and it blow up on me. This is why he said, walk with me, work with me. Because if I do these things, if I do these things, oh, I'm going to be all right. The problem is when I start trying to do it by myself, when I start trying to, to remain loyal to things I've been told, you know, I, I, I get it. My grandmama told me this. I get it. My pastor told me this. I get it. It just has to line up. And how they live it out has to line up. I came up in a church where they told us, okay, you single brothers, don't, uh, or you brothers, don't go by and pick up the single sisters. If they need a ride to church, make sure your wife is with you. I get the concept, but it, it don't line up with the word. Because, it, it, because you, then now you're going to have to tell me, why was Jesus at that well with a woman that had a history with all these men? And he's telling her, uh, you know, the, the husband you have now, you don't, that one ain't even yours. But Jesus saw the necessity to stop by the well. He didn't have to. <laughs> Just because he was thirsty don't mean that he needed water out of there. As a matter of fact, I don't even know. I have to go back and look at it. But I don't even know if he ever drunk in the water out of the well. Or if he just told her and explained to her that the, the water that I give you, it ain't got to come out of here. You can, uh, and, and you'll never be thirsty again. So it wasn't really about his thirst. It was about her need. But if we put all of these little extra things on people, this is all I'm saying. Then we're going to miss ministry opportunities. And I know what the words say about don't abstain from the appearance of evil and, and, and don't let your good be evil spoken of. We've got to deal with it in context because when the Lord leads us to a thing like the Lord was led to the well, all of that, you can't, you can't rightly divide the word on the word, if that makes any sense to you. Okay, because sometimes we try to, 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 to give Jesus the word when he's telling us to do something. No, no, no. You just obey him. And you walk with him. And you, you see what he is saying. Why? Because I'm yoked up with him. If I get yoked with him, my, the, the stuff is not hard. It's, it, it's not hard. And let me, let me make sure I see if I can find that scripture here. Um... 1 Peter 5 and 7 says, Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. We got to learn how to do this. We got to throw it on him. If I'm yoked up with him, he, he's ready to carry. Cast your care, all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Then Psalms 55 and 22 it says, Give your burdens to the Lord, and he will take care of you. He will not permit the godly to slip and fall. My God today. Y'all listen, that's, that's good news right there. That if I give him my burden, he's not going to allow me to slip and fall. I'm slipping and falling because I have not given him my burden. Because he's ready to take on my whatever I bring to the table. He's ready to take that on so that I don't have to try to go through life carrying that burden. 1 John 5, 1 through 3, it says this in the New Living Translation. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has become a child of God. And everyone who loves the Father loves his children too. Verse 2, we know we love God's children if we love God and obey his commandments. Now, this is the kicker right here. Verse 3, loving God means keeping his commandments 
and his commandments are not burdensome. So whatever I'm doing that's weighty and burdensome and, and, and exhausting, and it's so exhausting that it's now making me complain. Check it. Let's see if it's something God is requiring. Because the words say that his commandments, they're not burdens. They're not. So people of God, I just wanted to encourage you today to let you know that you can give him your burdens. He said it. Take my yoke upon, take my yoke upon, let me just read it here so I don't give you no bad information. Take my, verse 29, 11 and 29, take my yoke upon you and learn of me for I am meek and lowly in heart and ye shall find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy. This is why I brought out that first John scripture. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. He's not going to put a whole lot on us. And if you really paid attention while I was reading 1 John, it says that first, that chapter 5, that very first verse, it says, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has become a child of God. That's it right there. Now, all the other stuff, all, all the other stuff, if I believe, now, now the word believe is fully packed, though. Because if I believe, then I'm going to repent. And I'm going, and if I repent, I'm going to turn away both physically as well as mentally. So I encourage you all, stick with God. Walk with him. Don't put nothing on people that he haven't put on them. This walk is already challenging already. And he already said that uh, when the sun set free, they're free indeed. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And it's amazing how we keep trying to take away people's liberty because it ain't what we do. And I learned that just because I don't do certain things, that, that ain't for me. It's not for me to teach what I do. It's for me to teach the word of God. And this was the problem that Jesus had with the scribes and the Pharisees. They was teaching the word of God, but they was not living it. And for those who came on later, um, that is backed up in Matthew 23, verse 1 through 4. Because Jesus said, um, they teach the law, they interpret it, they do it. But what they, they just don't live it. And so I want you to be encouraged today to yoke up with Jesus. Get away with him. Read this from the Message Bible, that 11, 28, and 30, when you have some time. Just read it from the Message Bible, New Living Translation, so that you will get an understanding what Jesus is trying to say. I want, I want to build a relationship with you. I want, to be, I want you to be in step with me so you will know what is required of you. I don't want to put nothing heavy on you. I want you to walk this walk and I've made it easy.